Yeah. So welcome to a tilt webinar once again by popular demand we've got here in the back with let's play around and it already that title is exciting isn't it play we need that for a saturday afternoon and um, so it's saturday the 20th of february 2021 um i'm helen myers i'm chair of the london branch of the association for language learning and this is the zoom room that we use to host these webinars we always acknowledge hiker philp and linguoscope who've helped us set this up but of course, the most important person always is Joe Dale. Introduce yourself, please, Joe, and tell us what you can give to us. No problem at all, Helen. Thank you ever so much uh, for that lovely, lovely introduction. We're so excited to have Jimena back um, today. But a little bit about me. Um, as you know, I'm an independent languages consultant, making a living now uh, almost solely through um, webinars. And um, uh, and in the chat, I've put a, a number of different sessions I can help you with if you would like any ideas around remote teaching or hybrid teaching. Yeah, do uh, do get in contact and I would love to support you and help you uh, with anything any issues that, that you might have uh, be it uh, in a department or across a trust or a multiple academy trust or um, uh, a subject association whatever you would like so have a look at the document and do get in touch if you're interested in booking me. Thank you ever so much and I know that you are very busy at the moment Joe but I'm sure you'd be interested to hear from people. I it's would. great to know you're busy too. Thank you. If you're a member of AWL, please, I know I ask you this every time, but please put it in the chat and encourage people to join us. Um, you've got a particularly good reason to join at the moment because on Friday the 12th and Saturday the 13th of March, we've got um, a language world and we've got people here I know who are presenting at that language world, which is great. It's an online conference of two days, loads of things going on. And if you join AWL, you get um, a very much, very much reduced um, rate for having two days of of training so uh, friday 25 sessions three plenaries saturday 15 sessions four plenaries so it really is worthwhile joining um, and you'll get a 10 percent off the joining um awl as well at that time lots of things coming up which if you look on our website you can see them so we've got another powerpoint party part two on monday esmeralda is going to be giving us a session on monday the 3rd of march to do with uh, praise and jerome is joining her as, as well there on that one and um, so this is us today We've got an AWL Roadshow on Wednesday, the 24th of February. Um, I'm going to be presenting along with Rachel Hawkes, um, very good product called um, Santa Co for doing speaking on the 8th of March. New teachers, 5th of March, there's something for you there. And Joe just keeps on bringing all of these people. So there's just a list of some of the people and he's he sent three more today as well. So we're going right into May. There's lots to be had. And we've got a list there of all of the webinars are on our website, but now, this is what we're here for today. So over to Joe to introduce you to this session. Fantastic. So we're really, really delighted that Jimena has um, agreed to come back to uh, to do another Tilt webinar for us. Um, the the first one that Jimena did for us was incredibly well received, very well attended, very well received. Lots of incredibly nice comments on Twitter afterwards. And uh, as before, Jimena done a fantastic job in promoting this session, which is why at the time of recording, we have 115 people watching live. And I'm sure... More will uh, join us uh, shortly, as well as watch the recording. So uh, Jimena is live from Madrid, so she's an hour in the future, and she's going to be talking um, around all these different uh, tools that we're seeing right now, Deck Toys, Pear Deck Factory, Google Earth Projects, and Parlay. I'm particularly interested in Parlay because it's uh, one I've heard of but never seen uh, in, the, in the flesh, as it were. And um, without further ado, I'd love to hand over to Jimena. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this, and uh, can't wait to learn with you, as one says. Over to you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Helen, for your uh, introduction and for having me here. I'm really excited. I have so many things I want to share with you, so I'm just going to try to go to the point. Um, please confirm that you are seeing my screen. I have already shared it, so I hope everybody can see it. Yes, yeah, we, we, see we it. can see your we yes. can see your screen. I was going to say as well, right. if people have a question in the chat, if you put a queue in front of it, that would be lovely. And I will then collect all the questions and we'll do the questions at the end, Jimena, if that's OK. Yes, sure. No problem. Um, I wanted to insert here a link to give me a moment um, in the chat. Where can I find the chat now? Once I share the screen, I can, can't seem to find it. Uh, you should be able to see it at the top. Oh, yeah, here. Because yeah. um, I wanted to include my link, um, although it's going to be on the website later, to the presentation, but especially the link to answer the poll questions that I prepared. I prepared just two questions for you. So when we get to the question part, there's the link um, that you can click to access. Okay, 
it will be on my screen anyway, so don't worry. Um, so I'm going to start, well, I have already been introduced, so I'm going to go over these slides very briefly, not mentioning too many things, just so that you know I'm ambassador to these tools that I mention all the time on Twitter. Uh, these are one of my favorite ones, so if you ever need help with any of this, or you want to ask a question, just DM and I will be happy to help. Um, my favorite apps, because they helped me so much during lockdown last year, are the ones you can see on the screen right now. And one of my first questions, because I want to start with a first question to you, to the, as the people who are here spending the afternoon with me, is this one. Um, I would like you please to name your three favorite tools. So if you could uh, go to this website and uh, or click on the link that I posted on the chat and, and tell us which are your three favorite tools, that would be awesome so that we can have a souvenir from this session for later. I hope it's working fine. Let's see if someone can give me their answer so that we can see it in real time. This is the first time that I use WooClub, but it was mentioned in the MFL Twitter artist so much. I always use Mentimeter for this, but I wanted to try it in real time. So let's hope it works fine. So do we need a code? Do we, I no, put you, up. you, well, this is the code. As so you can see on the top, WooClub. Uh, well, I, 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 I can just see your first slide, but let's play around. Is that what I'm supposed to be looking at? No. This one, name your three favorite tools. You can see that. Uh, no, uh, at the moment. Yeah, someone no. is, someone has answered already. So I think it's working. Uh, learning app, Spiral, someone is answering already. So this is, a, you have the link in the chat. I'm going to post it again. Okay. But it's here on top. So you go to wooclub.com slash, and you have there the code to join. Yep. I will just put Sorry, it in the I chat understand. again. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. Thank you. So this is the first time I use it, but as you can see, we are always learning. So I, I just really wanted to, to great. try this. Thank you. To see how it works. Great. So some people are answering. There are a lot of priority one favorites, but only one person rated number two quizzes. A lot of priority ones I see here, learning apps, spiral, genially. Lots of tools, as you can see, because I'm sharing the screen, so you can see the same as I do. Okay, great, awesome. So there's uh, one more minute so that everybody who wants to share can participate um, and we will go on. So there we see familiar names that have been on Twitter a lot, Spiral, Bluekit, Wakelet, Kahoot, teacher made, so many great tools that people are sharing in the MFL Twitterati community where we all learn so much. Can I, can I just um, clarify for a minute? So we can see your slideshow, uh, like your first slide, but we're not seeing the answers. Are we supposed oh, to see the answers? No. Oh, sorry. No, we're just seeing the let's play around first uh, slide. And how can but, that But not be? the WooClap yeah. screen. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we see, we're seeing it says app.wooclap.com forward slash okay. events and what have you, but we're not seeing the results we'll appearing. That is, I will log idea. into WooClap. Maybe I didn't allow you to see the responses. Let me check. Mm. So are you in WooClap at the moment or are you in Google Slides? Display. So you don't see it. At the, the moment, answers. we could just... Well, I'm a bit confused because it says Google Slides, bottom right, but then it says app.wooclap in the URL. So, so are you don't you... see the poll. That's Can so strange. you go out and reshare and we'll just see whether... You... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Right, okay. now we can see it. Now okay, can... great. Yeah. I don't know why that happened. Maybe because, because of the connection, which is not very good. Maybe, I don't know. Well, anyway... Thank you for telling me. So as you can see, we see here lots of tools. People are answering. So great. That's awesome. I'm going to screenshot that for later um, when the session is over and I'm going to share it on Twitter so that we can have a souvenir. But I go back to my presentation now. Um, so we'll go on. 
Uh, so our goals for today, um, as were already mentioned, uh, as, as Joe already mentioned, we are going to talk briefly about deck toys because since the moment I presented this tool, Esmeralda has done some webinars and has um, done some videos and so on. So the first time that Joe told me to go over this webinar again, the idea was to go deeply into deck toys, but then things changed a little bit. So that's why we included Google Earth, Ballet and so on. But there are some main points about deck toys that I do want to clarify. So I'm going to go over deck toys. Um, then we're going to play around with Flashcard Factory from Pear Deck. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we will play around together and you will see as students what it's like. And then I'm going to to uh, show you how to make a nice project on Google Earth, which was very popular um, among my students. And finally, we're going to play around with Parlay again. So as you can see, the, the, the two tools where you will become students are Flashcard Factory and Parlay IDS. That's my, my idea for today. So we're going to begin with deck toys. So I think most of you already at least have heard about it. Uh, now, when I presented it the first time, it was quite un unknown in the MFL Twitterati community, but right now, I think a lot of people are familiar with it. It's a tool which allows you to create gamified learning paths and engage students. So the, the, the thing that I love about Deck Toys is that uh, in a very simple way, you can create uh, a game um, following very simple steps. So the, the bad thing about it is that it's really um, addictive. So uh, I remember during lockdown, I spent hours and hours creating these decks that you can see on my screen right now. Uh, they took me a long, a long time because it was so awesome to, to just play around with the tool and, and learn everything you could do with it that I got, lo I lost, I got lost uh, in, in it. I lost track of time. So uh, I'm going to tell you now what you can do to start in a simple way um, without getting caught in it, because I know we don't always have a lot of time to spare, okay? So my idea is with these simple steps that you have on the screen, create a new deck. Uh, we are going to see how to create a very simple one. I'm going to do it with you. Um, then you have to preview the deck to check that everything is working. And then number four, you assign it to the classroom. And number five, you access to the report. Those are the main steps that I'm going to try to summarize now briefly. So, um, okay, so um, you just go to the website to Deck Toys, you sign in and what you, you, what you see is a dashboard, okay? If you have never done anything with a tool, your dashboard would be empty. Mine has my four ones and one that Esmeralda did recently, which I really loved. And I'm trying to think of ways how to reuse it in German. Uh, that's why I have it here. It's a, a very awesome one that she did recently and she shared uh, on Twitter. So um, what, do you have, what you have to do is very simple. You press this plus button and, okay, I'm going to call it demo, demo MFL. You go there and and this is what you can choose automatically, okay? You get to choose six different, um, six different ways of creating a, a, a learning path. Um, the first option is the simplest one. So if you just want to have some games around uh, the same topic, this is the way you should go. Then uh, you have the fourth one, which allows you to have an easy path and a difficult path. So it's great when you have a group with two different levels, low achievers, high achievers, and you want to um, get students decide which path they follow. I have used it and it works great. Then you have more complex ones like um, the web, the, well, the merge one, which is um, um, students explore whatever way they want to, and then they get to a final activity in the end. You have a spiral one, which is a longer um, set of activities altogether. Then you have the one that I recommend to use for creating escape room with locks and treasure keys to find and so on. The one that Esmeralda uh, shared recently um, 
it's done with this with this uh, aspect, let's say. And the one that I recently shared yesterday, I think it was, or, or the day before, I don't remember, was also done with this one, but that is a more complex one. Or then you have the board game, which is the, the typical Monopoly game that you can create. Okay, let's, let's, let's stay with the simplest one to begin with. So um, I would go to the next tab, which is key concept study set. Uh, when I started with deck toys, I didn't, I didn't have this option to import from Quizlet, which is awesome. I discovered it recently because when I started with deck toys in the year 2019, I'm not sure this existed or if it existed, I didn't see it. So now it's awesome because it's very easy. If you have Quizlets uh, ready, it's very easy to create a deck. You go to, you go here, you press create and you follow the instructions. First thing you have to do is do what I'm doing right now, which is uh, putting this tab in your bookmarks. So this appears here, okay, in your bookmarks. Then you open Quizlet, which I already, I already have here open for the session. Okay, you open Quizlet, you choose the Quizlet that you want to, that you want to uh, put in your deck. And the only thing you need to do is from the Quizlet, press here in this get code uh, V2 and copy this. You copy it, okay? You go back to deck and you paste it here. You validate and there you have your study set. Everything that I had on Quizlet is here, okay? Then um, if I want to customize activities, if I want to change something, uh, you could customize it. But if you just want to leave it as it is, the suggestion the deck, deck toys prepared for you in the linear path, you just press this uh, magic wand here, which is generate, you press and automatically the deck toy is created. You can preview it if you wanted to see how it is, okay? Or you can edit the background and add pictures or whatever you want, because like this, it's very kind of ugly. So imagine I want to add a picture. Well, I could choose from the pictures that they offer, for example, this one, or I could upload a picture, whatever picture from Google or from the ones that Deck Toys has here. Well, you can search and, and add a picture or even a video, yeah, as you can see here, okay? So um, I can also add a title, okay? Imagine I want to add uh, deck toys demo here, add a title, and that's it. And as you can see, it took me uh, seconds to create. Of course, then if I want to make it more complex, if I want to check the games that I have, or if I want to change anything, uh, it's just a matter of going into each activity and imagine here, uh, I don't like this game because I think it's too easy or whatever. Well, I select another one and I by, switch, by choosing another game, you have lots of different games here. You just change your deck. It's as simple as that with the same study set, okay? Um, there are some options like sort me and word attack where you need two different study sets in order to have your deck toys to work because sort me and word attack are about choosing between one topic or another. And if you only have one topic, one study set, then you cannot use them, okay? Uh, so in general, even though in this deck that I created now, my deck only has one study set, in general, all my decks, all my decks uh, have more than one, as you can see, okay? I created four study sets around the same topic in order to be able to have different kinds of activities. So for example, I have here the, the word attack, uh, this one, I think it was, no, sorry. Uh, where was it? Um, this one, well, imagine I want to um, change this match into a word attack one, okay? Uh, I choose a study set here, I choose a study set here, and student get a, gets a word and has to decide which one of these two topics goes with this, okay? So that's how the word attack goes. So of course, in order, to that, in, in order for that to work, you need more than one study set, okay? 
So once you have your deck, what, what you can do, let's go back to the demo one, preview. Once you have your, your demo, uh, the one that I did right now, you have to assign it. So you just, okay, I'm going to preview it. I have it here. I see that everything is working. I go on as a teacher. I check that everything works. And then what I'm going to do is assign it, okay? I assign it to my class. Um, I have two different classes here. I assign it. Imagine I assign it to my Deutsch mit Jimena. Okay, continue. And I have it here. And uh, once I, I assign it to my students and my students play around with it, I can view my report. Okay, I press here on this little setting uh, wheel or whatever way you call it in English, and you check the view classroom report. Okay, so I will have, I would have all my report here of everything that my kids did, students. Okay, of course, now it's empty because this is just a demo that I just created. So um, that is what I wanted you to, to, to see, that Dectos can be complex, like the, the, these games that you see here, which are kind of very complex, but it can also be a matter of seconds, okay? And, um, and well, that is basically what I wanted you to, to have a clear idea about uh, on this session. Uh, I included on my presentation that I'm going to be sharing, as you can see on my screen, the explanation of the different kind of apps that you have uh, on Deck Toys. Um, I also included um, um, a video here with, with a, a tutorial with more information about each one of the games and so on. And I also included this video from the creator of Deck Toys, um, which is awesome because it tells you how to create, how to turn your worksheets, the ones that you already have in a PDF, images, or, uh, or Word document, how to create automatically uh, by dragging your document into Dectos, how to create a nice interactive worksheet, which is something that Dectoys can also do for you. So um, my best tutorials, I already included them here in this collection because, um, well, once I, I see a video that I really like that is really clear about the tool, I compile it in my Wakelet collection for Dectoys. So here I share it with you. You are going to have it in the presentation, uh, the best video, the best video tutorials in order to use uh, Dectoys properly, okay? So that was a little, a bit, a little bit I know it was a bit of a quick about deck toys, but as I mentioned before, the idea was to show you in real time how you could do one in seconds, okay? Uh, Which Jimena, is, I be think, before we move yeah. on to the next um, yeah. tool, can we maybe just look at a sure. few questions? Because um, I know the questions have been answered in the chat, but just from the point of view of the recording, yeah. it'd be nice to hear you giving the of answers course. as well, if that's okay. So first of all, do the students need an account or do they access with a code? How does that, how does the onboarding work? They access by pressing the link that you share with them. So once you, uh, once you put your deck toy here, as you can see on the, on the, on the, oh, links of Deutsch. I, I am thinking in German right now <laughs> on the left hand. Okay. Sorry. On the left side of my deck, you can see my classroom. So once you put your deck here, okay, you click here, share with students, and um, and you get a and you get a, a, a link, okay. So you just uh, share the link with the students, and students access this link and access the deck toy. So they don't create an account on deck toys, okay. They just press a link that you share with them. It's really important now that you mentioned that it's really important to uh, not get confused with the link that you share with teachers and the link that you share with students. So if I go to my deck here and I press the, the, the little settings button here, um, uh, it is, um, I want, well, it's already shared. Okay. Share with teachers. I'm going to get another one. Maybe this one. Uh, share with teachers. Yeah, because see, this is published, so I can share it with teachers. Um, I'm going to share with teachers, which means if I if I give this link to teachers, they can see the answers. They can see how the deck has been made. So it's really important that you don't give this link to your students. The link that you have to give to students is the one you obtain from the left 
uh, side of my screen once you put the deck in your classroom, okay? And when we, when we talk about classroom, we're not talking about Google Classroom. We are talking about this space here that Deck Toys gives you, okay? So it's just very simple. You share with students, you get the link, and they access your class and, and they will see your deck there. So Fantastic. And then do, do students have to put their names in or what sort of data does Deck Toys um, have about the students? Do they have to... Uh... I don't remember. Sorry. Don't worry. That's fine. I don't remember what sure, they I'm see. I'm sure June, I, June in the I, chat can help. I, I us think with that, they sure. can connect with Google account if they want to. But yeah, June is over here. So maybe she can help us out with this. Right. But but the students do not need to have a Gmail, uh, have a, an email address to log in they, or anything like that. They just need the link. Is that right? I okay. think so. Yeah. Right. I now mean, my should... students use Google Classroom. So they do have an account. Okay. But I don't think it's a must. Okay. But now you showed us how to use Quizlet um, as a yeah. way of importing um, yeah. existing sets. You could, yes. you could obviously do that without Quizlet, but do you of find course. that's the simplest way of doing it? Well, I mean, you can do it. I can start one from scratch, demo two, as you as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And of course, I can. Okay, I choose whatever. Imagine uh, this one. This one I like very much. Key concepts, and you start one from scratch. Right. But okay. of course, you start from scratch and you have to type in there your vocabulary and everything. Uh, you can also start with a Google Sheet. If you have your vocabulary on, a, on Excel files, you can also import them from there. Or if you already created a deck and you want to use um, uh, a study set from another deck, uh, you can also press here and, and reuse one that you already have. Fantastic. Um, are there, is there like a bank of decks that people have made already on the site for you to yes look at. yeah i'm happy that you mentioned that because i forgot to say it and it was one of the things that some people on twitter had asked and i had forgotten to mention as you can see um i have just reached my quota of private decks because uh, um, deck toys is a free tool but there's a premium feature here as you can see i i don't i don't pay for it because unfortunately my school doesn't 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 give us money for this so I can't just pay for all the tools that I use so I have to choose and and for the moment I'm, I'm not paying for it so how do I manage to create more decks and more decks and more decks well if you create a deck that is has a high quality content and 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 the and the owners of the tool uh, decide that it's worth publishing uh, you fill in a form, okay? Imagine that I, I'm not going to do it with this one because it's a demo, but uh, imagine that I'm creating it and I want to share it, okay? I share it with other teachers. So if you would like to publish it on the deck gallery, you would press this button here. I'll do it again, okay? You have three options. Uh, this is if you want to send a link to a fellow teacher, only and this is the one you press if you want to publish it on the deck gallery so you fill in a form i did it yesterday you fill in a form um giving consent and saying that it is your own creation and not a copy of someone else's and that you checked that everything is working and so on and if you meet the requirements they publish it so as you can see mine, I created it yesterday and very fast, they already published it. So that means that now I have more space to have more private decks, as you can see, because you have a limit of three private decks that you can do. But if you create good content, quality content, and you publish it and share it with the world, which I think is awesome, uh, you do that and it gets published here in the deck gallery. And there are amazing creations from amazing teachers. So, so wonderful uh, from a lot of subjects that you have here, from a lot of, uh, I mean, not only languages, science, math, lots of decks that you can uh, find here and that you can use with your classroom, even though you're not creating one of your own. So if you don't have time to create one and you find one that suits you, you could just use it. Okay, so this is awesome as well. Brilliant.
That's brilliant. Thank you so much. If we carry on to Flashcard yeah. Factory, that's brilliant. But lots of people are, are sharing top tips in the chat as well. But I thought it would be good to, to go over some of those questions which are coming up um, with you answering them so they appear on the video. Uh, yeah, it's uh, better of, yeah. not to leave everything brilliant. for Thank the you end. So You're much. right. Right, Flashcard Factory. <laughs> okay, so the next one would be Pared Flashcard Factory. Um, a year ago, it was called Vocabulary Factory. I don't know if someone heard about it, but it's the same thing. They changed the name recently. And it's a tool that not everybody is familiar with. I mean, people usually know about Pear Deck, but they don't know Flashcard Factory. And that's why I told Joe that I wanted to show you this because I think it's, it's so awesome that I don't understand why not more teachers are using it, okay? So Flashcard Factory is a tool which allows students to build sentences and create their own flashcards at the same time. And once you play with this tool, which we're going to do now in this webinar, um, uh, you get flashcards that were done by students with your help, of course, and which you can export as a PDF file or you can export to GymKit, which is another wonderful tool that I'm not going to go over today, but I really like it. So this is what um, um, one that I did with verbs in German, you can see. Um, and this is a factory. That's why it's called Flashcard Factory because the, the, the layout of the tool is designed as a factory, as if people were work, children, students were working at the factory, creating sentences with the terms that they receive, okay? So what students see is um, this screen that you have here because they access with a code and they are divided into two teams, day shift and night shift, okay? Uh, you, if you don't like a team, you can shuffle it and change names and so on. So if you have issues because there are two students who you, you know cannot work together in pairs or whatever, you can switch that, okay, uh, and, and you change it. But it is automatic. You don't have to do anything, okay? Um, and then uh, students create um, sentences with the words that you gave them. And at any time, you can do quality control that we're going to do now. Um, you can do quality control, which is the screen that you see here at the bottom, and you decide with them whether that flashcard is okay, so you press the green button, or whether it's not okay because there's something that they have to correct, so you press the red button. That's basically how it works, okay? You create the vocab lists, you give students a code to join, uh, you work uh, during the production phase, and uh, finally, you go to quality control and shipment uh, where you export your flashcards to a PDF file or a gym kit quizzes, okay? Uh, so I'm going to show you now briefly how to create your vocabulary list, where you can find this flashcard factory. And after that, um, the best thing to do is for us to try it together, which I think is the best way for you to enjoy the tool and understand how it works. So first of all, how do I um, how do I create a vocabulary list? Well, if you access the Pear Deck um, uh, web, okay, you sign in. I already sign in. I'm signing here. I have the premium uh, account in this case because I use Pear Deck a lot. Um, so um, I discovered Pear Deck by chance. Uh, the summer of 2019, because as you can see here, it's hidden. It's, uh, they have the main one, which is the Google Slides Pear Deck, which is awesome, which I already, which, which, which I also recommend to you. But the one that I found uh, by chance was this green thing that you see here, okay? This is the, the vocabulary list. So if you want to create a vocabulary list, you press there and, um, and you start uh, entering your terms. So imagine I'm I'm uh, I create a house or whatever, and you can find definitions. I mean, if you're working with English, you will have it easier because you get the definition. You don't have to do anything. If I'm working with German, I have to do everything myself because, of course, the definitions are in English. So I would put, imagine, house, and. Uh, I would give instructions to my students, uh, write a sentence with 
das, äh, klein, ha, das kleine Haus. Okay? Use the verb uh, haben, whatever. Okay? So you can either get the definitions that you have here in English, or you can write here wherever you want. I mean, it can be a definition, or as I use it, it can be instructions so that kids know what to do with this, with this word or with this sentence, because of course you can put a sentence here, okay? Um, mm, in the Schule gehen, or ir al colegio, since we have many uh, Spanish uh, teachers in the room. Ir al colegio, um, translate, this sentence, I go to school every day, imagine, okay? So by doing this, I create all the terms that I want. I don't recommend to have more than 20 terms because you won't have time in 50 minutes that, that a session lasts. You won't have time to go over more than 20 based on my experience, okay? But you can create, I mean, I think the limit, is, the limit is 30 or 40. So you can go on creating if you want to, okay? Once you have your vocabulary list ready, you give it a name, okay? You give it a name and you just hit the play button and that's it, okay? You can also create a, a vocabulary list by importing, okay? You can import a list I have never done it because I always create it on the go, but you can export and you can export your list as well. Okay. Can you, never... import, can you import from Quizlet, Jimena? Do you know? I'm not sure because I've never done it. Um, no, it doesn't look like it. Look, it's very limited, yeah. this option. It's very, it doesn't look like it. No, but it's really so easy to use and to put the, the terms here that I, I've never even had the, the, the need to do that. So once you create the, the, the vocabulary list, um, it's a little bit hidden to find it, you know, uh, because, yeah, you go to your, you think you would go here and it would appear here, but it doesn't happen, okay? If you press here, find vocabulary list, you just access a wonderful um, world of vocabulary lists already made, okay? So, of course, this is very useful for English learners. But for other languages, this is not useful. And if you want to access yours, um, uh, what you have to do, instead of pressing, like I did before, instead of pressing here, you would go to Google Drive. Because once you create, um, once you create um, a vocabulary list, like the one I have just created, automatically you get a folder uh, on your uh, Google Drive. Okay, I'll show you. I have here my folder. Um, oh yeah, it's in my other user. Wait a moment. Because you know, I have two accounts. It's here. So uh, I have here my uh, Perdeck uh, folder in Google Drive. And one, once I create anything on Perdeck, it appears here. This, this, this uh, folder appears on its own, I didn't do anything to, to, to make it appear, it just appears. So here in vocabulary, I have the vocab list that I have already created, that I have just created, okay? So it's as simple as that. I would double click here and we would play with this, okay? For the session today, I already created one. And what we are going to be doing now is you are the ones that want to, of course, uh, some volunteers, I hope we have volunteers, but we're going to play around. So this is the list I already created for the demo here. It's in English because we're all English speakers. Uh, this is with phrasal verbs, okay? And we're going to play just a few, uh, a few minutes so that you see how it works, okay? So these are the steps that you would follow to do this with your students. So as you can see, it's really simple. Um, you get this screen where students have a website and a code. So they have to go to this website and access the, the, this code. So that's what I would like you to, to do if that's all right. And when someone comes here, I will see here 
instead of zero, zero workers, I will see the number of people that join us. Uh, we've got a couple of, uh, sorry, we've got one yeah. question in particular, Jimena, about okay. mi Microsoft users. Can Microsoft users use uh, Flash yes. Card Factory? Yes, because Pear Deck is not only for Google Slides, it's also for PowerPoint. So um, Pear Deck also works with Microsoft. Right, because people are saying they can't see the link uh, if they're a Microsoft user. I'm not exactly sure what link they're referring to. Maybe if people can... Well, this is in the it. website. I would put here, jo Cause, join... Cause yeah, because I, I know with the audio slides option, that's only possible in Google Slides, not in PowerPoint. I'm not sure if the, if that's the same for Flashcard Factory. Uh, mm, as far as I know, no. I mean, you can use it just like you can use, I mean, maybe the audio. I didn't know that you couldn't use the audio version on PowerPoint because I always use Google Slides. But the other features of Pear Deck, you should be able to use them. So okay. I don't see why this couldn't okay. work with them um, with uh, with I mean, it's not as it's not a PowerPoint. I mean, this is just online, you know. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, it, I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's it's an online thing. So this is the. Um, the, uh, they're, the they're also saying they can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Or what, what they're yeah. seeing, they're seeing sorry. your Google Drive. Uh, do you want to to share the link with them? What yeah. you need to show them. Sure. Because you can't see the code right now. No, we're just seeing your Google oh, Drive. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing and sharing again no because problem. it happened the same before, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, maybe... You're doing brilliantly. It's all good. Okay, thanks. Let's see if now it works. Yeah. Can you can see, see it code. now? Yeah, yeah, we can see the code okay. now. That's great. Thank you. Great. Um, I put it. I put the link in the chat. You access this, that link and... Um, and you can, uh, with this code, uh, QGC, et cetera, uh, I see two people already joined. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if there's a maximum people here that we can accept, but as long as we have at least some, we will start, okay? So this is what you would normally do with your students, okay? You would uh, uh, show this screen, or if you are doing this through a video call, which is something that I have done and works perfectly well, uh, you do what I did. You send them the, the this link here and, and you copy the code in the chat as well so that they don't get confused. It's really easy. You copy it. I'm doing it for you as well. And that's it. Okay. Well, I have 35 people. Um, so I think, well, I'm more coming. I hope the tool can handle that, <laughs> but um, um, I'll give one a few more seconds just so everybody who wants to join can, okay? And and you will see how it works. It's 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 amazing. You will love it. And as I was telling you, I discovered this by chance, and and also the premium feature of this tool. I don't know why, but it's not. They don't. They don't give it the importance that it has. I don't know why for premium users, it's exactly the same as the free version. I mean, I don't get anything different than what you as a, as a free user would have, you know? So it's, it's, um, it's a very unknown tool. Well, um, I think we will clock in, okay? When you want to start this activity, what you have to do is press here, clock in, okay? Joe, you just tell me if, I'll, if some more people, I sh should I wait or should I start? You just tell me I, what, because I, you're I seeing start, the chat. I would okay. start, but I, uh, okay. there's a, another couple of questions. I, yeah. I know that we sort of said the question at the end, but the, I think these are important. So yeah. do the sure. students need a Google account to access this? They, they, they can, my understanding is they can have a Microsoft account or a Google account. Is that right? Yeah, they do. They can, they can have a Microsoft account or a Google account. But um, has it asked you to, to yeah, so Sabine, I mean, the people who are signing Sabine, in? Sabine is saying, I have to sign in with my Google account. Okay. It's not giving her the option to sign in with her Microsoft account. So that would be a problem, I think, in a school oh, yeah. that using Microsoft um, emails. I'm sure if we tell that to the company, they could uh, check it because okay. I, I, sh I am sure they work with Microsoft users as well with Pear Deck PowerPoint. So... Okay, yeah, I mean, so yeah. I, 
Yeah, sorry, over to you. So I'll, I'll stop interrupting. Uh, okay, more, more questions or should I start? Uh, I, th I think we've just got an issue around Microsoft with Pear Deck, but I think people can research that. Yeah, people can research that afterwards or contact Pear Deck. But I think let's let's carry on with this now. Let's I will on. contact them. I mean, okay. I, I, I'm sending them feedback all the time. And <laughs> and I, I, I will I will send them a message later Thank about you. it just to check what we could do or if they could do something about it. OK, so um, it's a it's an odd number, as you can see, 71. So that can happen in your classroom as well. Um, the tool will uh, put us in pairs. Well, not not anymore. But if that happened to you, um, one student would be left alone. As you can see, the tool has decided that we have two teams now, day shift and night shift. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. We can. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. So as you can see, students are paired up. Um, and imagine I don't like the teams that because there's a pair there that I don't like or whatever, I would press here shuffle teams and that's it and the tool shuffles it okay. If the, it's an odd number, one of the one of the teams day shift or night shift will have a student who works alone okay, but it's okay that's no problem, I mean, uh, I usually help them out a bit more because they have to work double but. That's fine. I mean, I have done that and that's fine. OK, so let's start. Let's play. So how do we play? The teacher presses let's play. As you can see here at the bottom, I start. It's thinking maybe it's because there is a lot of people here. I hope it works. OK, let's play. It's thinking. And once it stops thinking, you will each receive uh, words that you have to uh, use uh, to write sentences. Okay, here we are. Yes. Okay. So as you can see, um, you might be right now uh, creating your own examples. I guess. Hope so. This is the first time I do it with a with such a big group. So as you can imagine, we can have some issues. I hope not, but. OK, so there's someone here who already created a sentence. And so sentences, when they, when they are made, they come to the factory here. OK, as you can see. You are you're creating terms fast. OK, so now something is happening. OK, the, the, the production chain is, is, is kind of blocked. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop to do a quality control, okay? Why will I stop to do a quality control? I usually do this in my classroom uh, because even though you give them instructions on what to do, um, my experience tells me that the first minute they, do it, they, they get everything wrong unless you explain to them with an example what they should do and what they shouldn't do. So imagine that I asked, um, my students to create here an example and to uh, make a drawing uh, of that example. Uh, I wouldn't accept this flashcard, okay? So I would just hit the red button and I, I won't accept it, okay? But this one, okay, does it have mistakes? No, it has a drawing, okay, I'll say yes, okay? And this is how, to, how you go over the examples with the students. You correct mistakes, whatever, OK, um, and imagine that they understood what's right and what's wrong. You can always go back to the production phase and have them continue working. OK, so I let you I give you a few seconds more to get a hang of the tool and we will finally continue to quality control. You just stop me, Joe, if there are any questions or anything I should answer. Um, okay, so I go good. to quality. It's all good. I think I think we've okay. established uh, we've established in the chat that the the pair deck flashcard factory or the vocabulary part is not part. It, it doesn't work with Microsoft, but uh, everything else with uh, pair deck apart. Well, most okay. things work with Microsoft, but just not this particular feature. Okay, so I'm going to tell them about it because it's such a pity and it it's awesome as you can see. 
Um, well, the students get points. As you can see, the teams, you see at the, at the top, one, three points. They get points for the correct sentences that they get. Okay. Oh, I really like that one. Even though it doesn't have a drawing, I will accept it. <laughs> this is really fun. Students like it a lot. I never give up, whatever. Okay. So both teams get here their points. And once you go over all the sentences that your students created, uh, you would go to the next phase, which is shipping. Okay, so I press here. And this is where you can print the set, okay, as a PDF. It's really fast, as you can see. I, I keep it as a PDF. Okay. And, and I usually post it on Google Classroom for my students to have it as a souvenir because I usually use this tool to review before an exam or something like that, okay? So that is one of the options that you could do. Oh, sorry. That is one of, sorry, what did I do? Uh, no, no anotar, okay. Um, that is one of the things that you could do, but you could also export it to GymKit, okay? Which if you don't know is another, another look at quizzes Kahoot thing that you can use to create automatic questions. So imagine that I want to export these flashcards that we have created right now. I export it to GymKit Live and um, okay, I'm not going to publish it because mm, it wasn't a serious one, uh, but if I wanted to, I could share it to Classroom with my students and I could go to the set, okay? then I'm going to delete it afterwards, that's fine. Uh, and as you can see, automatically, I have a quiz because gym kit is just a quiz that I can play with you. So I could play with you uh, with this tool, okay? That I'm not going to go, in, go deeply into it because it would take us 20 more minutes. But as you can see, it's really, really, it's fantastic. It's, it's really easy to use, uh, it's fun. And kids are asking me to do this a lot because they really enjoy writing sentences in a different way. So in my opinion, it's very unknown and they don't, Pear Deck doesn't invest enough money on this. They don't give it the importance that it has um, because it's really awesome. I don't know if there are any questions, but if not, I'm going to move on. So yeah, so uh, there's, we've got a couple of questions. So for example, um, could, could you clarify how exactly this works with pairs? Um, because there's a few people who aren't so so presumably the idea is they have to work in yeah pairs to, yeah, yeah sorry I didn't explain it works? yeah I didn't explain it uh you did everything on your own right now but well you didn't do it on your own as you saw when you created your flashcard you got two aspects um let me go back to the to the screen here you have two the the flashcard consists of two uh, spaces one space where, where you write and one space where you draw okay so when students work as pairs which is which is an aspect i love about this tool one of them uh, writes down the examples and the other one draws that same example and in the next term that they get it's the other way about so the student that was writing now draws and, 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 and the other way about, okay? So they are working together in pairs, helping each other um, and, and part of a big team, night shift and, and day shift. And, and so they are eager to have correct sentences and correct flashcards because it's so amazing to get points for them. Right, so um, should, should we be able to see two screens now? Because we can only see uh, uh, sorry. G Trainer Demo English at the moment. Again, yeah, sorry. I don't know why that happens. It's probably because I have two users here. Okay, sorry. So I was saying, as you can see here, now you can see it, right? Yeah. Okay, as you can see here, there's a, a writing uh, part of the flashcard and a drawing part. So as I was saying, um, the pair gets the same term, uh, one of them has to write and the other one has to draw. And for the next term, it's the exact opposite. The person who was writing gets to draw and vice versa. 
So um, it really promotes teamwork, which is something else about this tool that I like. That's excellent. And can you upload pictures or do you have to draw? No, I mean, um, you can't upload pictures, but uh, with the draw tool, sometimes what I tell them to do is to write with their finger if they are using a Chromebook or a or a, on an iPad or where, where they can, or even with the mouse, they can do it. They can uh, draw the translation. So uh, not, not every student like, like, likes um, drawing. So what I sometimes tell them is to just write down the translation um, with handwriting, if, I, if, I, if I'm clear enough. Yeah, that's brilliant. And okay. the, all the students need is just the link. Is that right? They don't need an account or anything to access this. Is that right? Yeah, as far as as far as I know, it was like that. But you were telling me before that some of them had to log in. So I'm not I'm not completely sure now. Yeah. So we need to we need to check about that. Yeah, okay. I have that's, to check that. I have okay. to check that. Wonderful. I think those are all the, the pressing questions. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. It's okay. fantastic. Thank you. So this is the flashcard factory. OK. Um, I will move on to Google Earth. Um, I will show you quickly an example that I did uh, with my year nine students, which Joe, Joe already knows because he was the first one who asked me to share with him. And then I will um, show you the basic steps that I showed my students, just in case you want to do the same with your, with your, with your groups. Um, I discovered Google Earth uh, because I, I was planning to do um, a virtual tour activity or something like that. But then I, when I was going to do it, I saw that in a few months, virtual tour will stop working. So that's why I decided that I needed to know how to do it with Google Earth. And um, I learned with my students, really. This is the project that I asked them to do. Um, here you can see, sorry, I already have it open, but I open it again. Okay, there it is. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? Yep. The yeah, yeah, all good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all good. So this is this is this is the the mixtape on Flipgrid that I created for parents to see. So it's public; everyone can access here. I I shared it on Twitter, and I'm going to put it on the chat as well. So you want to have a look? Oh, sorry. So this is an example of what they did. Okay. Um, uh, they did it on Google Earth, and they taped it for me to correct because it was easier for me to have it uh, all to, all the projects together in the same place, okay? So they created um, a, a tourist activity, let's say, okay? Um, what I gave them in order to do this were clear, uh, I gave them a PowerPoint, which you will, when, you, when I share this presentation with you, you will have access to this PowerPoint and you will be able to use it or uh, customize it if you want to, do this activity on your own. I provided this uh, information about different cities in Germany that I wanted them to, to um, explore. I let them choose which city they wanted to do. And I gave them clear instructions on how Google Earth worked and so on, okay, which you will have as well. Um, and basically what they did was to open a project in Google Earth, which I'm going to show you now how it's done. Uh, uh, very important to create the new project in Drive and not as a KML file uh, because this is just not so does not work so so well for me. Maybe for Microsoft users this is a better option, but for Google Drive users it's not. Okay, so my students created the project straight on Google Drive. Okay, and, um, and then you add the features that I'm going to show you now how to add very, very briefly. And then uh, I asked them to present the project on Flipgrid uh, with the record screen option on Flipgrid. I did it without audio, but, um, but because I was, a, I was a fool, really, if I were to do it again, I would do it with audio and I would have them tell me, uh, guide me, uh, through their project, which I think would promote not only the writing skills that this project um, entails, but also the speaking skills, okay? But anyway, you learn by your mistakes, so that is what I learned after I did it, okay? So how do you create a project on uh, Google Earth uh, in basic steps, okay? So first you need to 
execute Google Earth. I'm already in because I did it before. Okay. Um, and now you just go to the uh, projects. Uh, this icon here is the projects um, area. Uh, I press and I'm going to create a new project. So here is where I told you that you could create from Google Drive or create a KML file, which I'm not really sure what it is, to be honest. I haven't tried it, but the students that created by mistake the project as a KML fi file had trouble sharing it with me. So that's why I prefer to create it in Google Drive, okay? Um, anyway, if they share it on Flipgrid, there's no problem how they create it. Uh, it doesn't matter, okay? So I create the project. And once I create it, I, I give it a name. So MFL demo, uh, whatever. And uh, I add a description. This is um, a nice route, whatever. Okay, and now I have to add features. What can you add? You can add these four things that you have here. The first one is to search to add a place. So I press search and imagine I want to show you the city where I was born. Okay, so I'm going to choose Buenos Aires. I choose it. And um, I get the text here and I add it, press here, I add it to my project. Very important that you tell your students to edit it because if they save it straightforward, uh, the text that stays here, it's the text done by Google Earth. And that's not what I wanted them to do. So it's very important that they press edit. And of course here you replace the information and you write, this is the city where I was born. Okay, you can include links, you can use bold, change the size. Okay, there are some things that you can do. Switch to HTML if you want to, whatever. Okay, but anyway, the important thing is that they write something here. Uh, then if you want to change the, the size of the little tag here, uh, you can. It can be large, it can be small, or you get no info box if you don't want to have any particular uh, label, okay? I, I'll just leave it as it is. You can change, if you want to, you can change the, 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 the sign post, this one. Imagine a heart whatever, and uh, that's it. It's saved automatically, okay? There is no save uh, button here because it's saved automatically. So it appears here. So that was the first feature I could add, which is search to add a place. Uh, the second thing I can do is to add a place mark. So imagine that I want to add a place mark here, Palermo, which is another nice city in Argentina. Uh, not city, neighborhood, oh my God, uh, Palermo. Palermo, I edit, um, you, have beauty, you have beautiful gardens here. Okay, I, can, I could even add a picture if I wanted to from Google. Let's do it so that you see how it works. Um, I'm not sure this is it. Palermo, Argentina, because yeah, this one. Okay, and uh, you get the picture that you want. Of course, again, you can change the, the things that you put there and uh, that's it. It's automatically saved, I go back, okay? Then the third feature you can add is draw line or a shape. So imagine that I want to have students tell me how to go from one place to the other, and then to Caballito, and then to Avellaneda, okay? And that's it. Um, mm, play, uh, tourists uh, path. I edit, 
and this is the way to go, whatever. Okay, you can also change the color of the line, which is something that kids like doing. Okay, and that's it. That's it, as easy as that. And then the last one is full screen slide, which mm, only one or two of my students used, unfortunately, but it's nice because they can create, uh, it's, it's like a slide that uh, appears on their project. So, um, introduction or whatever. Hi, this is my uh, tourist guide uh, path to Buenos Aires or whatever. Yeah, I, I can put a background image, I can change colors for my slide, whatever I want to do. And it's automatically saved. And that's it. So what's, this is what students should do. As you can see, it's really easy. It's pressing new feature and deciding what they add, okay? And then uh, to present it on Flipgrid, they just press present. And they get here a table of contents and they start the, their path, okay? And this is the slide. Okay, that they can put at the beginning, of course, not at the end as I did right now, but they could put it at the beginning or at the end or whatever way they want to. And, and that would be it. And I don't know if there are any questions about it. Uh, well, pe people are loving it. Um, but presumably, you could also go into Street View as part of your tour. Oh, yeah, sure. You? Yeah, yeah. So if, so if you're recording your screen using, say, Flipgrid, you could be going from place to place and then in each time, drag the little peg man this uh, one that, yes yeah, exactly and then go into street view and that could all be recorded at the same time while exactly. you're giving a voiceover in the target language so you exactly. can combine so, so imagine with writing yeah yeah now that we can travel this is awesome because they can be in any city you want them to be and 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 speak about it and yeah it's awesome awesome and uh, esmeralda was getting excited about using her bitmoji so presumably oh, yeah. when when you add, uh, you can add an image um, as your place marker. That could be your Bitmoji, couldn't it? I think so. I've ne I've never added one myself because I haven't created uh, the um, the projects. My kids did, <laughs> my my students did, but I guess if you have a picture in your yeah, of course, yeah, I yeah. could add my my profile for example here. You can add your Bitmoji as well. Yeah. Yeah, you or um, as, Esmeralda said, your video bitmoji that she makes in PhotoSpeak. So you could uh, take an image, put it into PhotoSpeak, turn it into a talking character, then put it into um, the Google Earth projects and then record your scre screen at the same exactly. time. Wow, yeah. Exactly, exactly. There are there, There's so much you can do with this and it's really easy to use. As you saw, it's just, mm, uh, especially the thing that they forget to do is what I said, what I mentioned about editing the place because one the, the the low achievers in my group left some of them left this text instead of editing it and i my project was all about writing um in german so okay so that wasn't nice of them <laughs> to do so it's really important that when you explain it to your students they understand that they have to edit it and add their own texts because otherwise they are not working much and can I ask how much scaffolding did you give the students to sort of help them through this? Did you sort of demo the whole thing first of all, or did you let, just let them? I go didn't for it? because, to be honest, I wasn't an expert myself, so I was. It was kind of risky on my part, but I didn't have time to prepare the project properly. I prepared my slides. I prepared the tutorials. I mean, I, I had everything. I had a clear idea of what I wanted, but I. I hadn't used Google Earth myself ever. I had only watched tutorials. So I gave them my instructions. I gave them my rubric. I gave them, of course, all the vocabulary, et cetera, et cetera. But the tool itself, I gave them the tutorial that I uh, followed. And, and that's it. And they explored it on their own. And um, that's why some of them, of course, didn't edit the text because some of them didn't realize that they had to do that okay right. so if i were to do it again i would show it to them first because um well it's just i didn't do it because of lack of time 
But now uh, you're. For, but they like surprised the, me with amazing creations. Yeah, yeah. And then next year you'll be able to show the new students what last year's students did for this project. That's amazing. That's great. Exactly. That's why I taped it on Flipgrid because I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to have everything there. Uh, and be able to showcase it and yeah and we, we had the question which exactly. year group which year group did you do this with were they like the equivalent of year nine or like 14 year old nine or? no it was the equivalent of year nine so they were uh 15 14 15 years okay. old brilliant yeah awesome thank you so much yeah. That's wonderful so that was it about Google Earth. I don't know if there are if there aren't any comments. We'll go to the last one. Yeah, I think that's. I think people are just saying wonderful. OMG, this is amazing. Um, yeah. So maybe if we do the last one, uh, if you're happy to carry on, I mean, it's, this is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Let's sure. do the last one, and um, I'm sure this is going to be new to everybody as well. That's brilliant. Yeah, this is new, and and to be honest, this is the first time I am going to hold a session using the speaking tool of Parlay because I have tried the the written one but i haven't tried the oral one which joe was eager for me to try so i have tried it as a student but i haven't i haven't had a class with which i could try this uh, so you are going to be my my guinea pigs today so what is parlay i i came i i i, I came across parlay by chance at a, at a google since i am google trainer well they they showed us parlay once and i um I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's just so amazing. Parlay is a free tool which allows you to hold oral and written discussions with your students. Of course, I wouldn't say it's for primary students, may, may, maybe because um, it, it requires a little bit of critical thinking. And so I think for secondary, it's great for primary. I don't know. I wouldn't use it myself. But of course, it's free and you can try it if, if there are primary students, uh, teachers here. Um, I'm going to show you what the tool can do. Oh, what happened here? Oh, yeah. OK, so um, these are there are three parts in Parlay. You have the Parlay universe, which is where teachers share their creations. OK, that's called Parlay universe. So the gallery where you, when you publish a topic, it appears there. And then the two different tools that Parlay has are the online round table and the live round table, okay? The online round table, uh, it's basically for writing, for writing assignments. And the live round table, it's for debates and discussions and oral assignments, verbal discussions, okay? So I have tried with my students recently the online round table and they found it so amazing. I'm going to show you how it works, but the one that we're going to be trying together to play around with it will be the oral one, okay? The live round table. So this is the writing one. So um, these are screenshots from an activity that I created that I'm going to show you now um, in further detail. Give me a moment. Uh, I have it here. I have to stop sharing and resharing because I'm changing user and you probably won't see it. So give me a moment. Uh, this is it. Okay, share. So this is it. Are you are you seeing the this plus new round table yes. thing? Yeah, we can. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. So okay. when you access Parlay for the first time, uh, you just get this Parlay ideas. You you access here. Well, I'm already signed up. I wanted you to see the whole thing. I log out. Okay, and you access like this: sign in with Google, sign in with microphone, or use your own. So. Uh, you will probably get ans ask, get, get questions about this. So yes, it works with Google and it works with Microsoft or with any other email, okay? So I, I am already logged in. I'm going to log in. And this is a real example that I did with my kids. Uh, this is you, you, you enter and this is what you see. The universe option, which is basically a gallery where you can find all the topics that other teachers created. Okay, these are, as you can see, topics. Uh, you have subjects here, English, history, etc. You can filter and you can even follow uh, great teachers, creators. Okay, and that would be the universe. 
Um, and the other thing that you see is uh, the, the, my portfolio, okay? And courses you teach, courses you study. Um, courses you study is if you joined a discussion. Uh, today, since you're going to be joining me, you will, uh, you will keep in your account uh, the course with me here, okay? But the courses you teach is where you uh, have your classes, your groups, so I have just tried this tool recently. I tried it with my year 11 students, which is what we call in, in Spain, bachillerato, the older students who are 16, 17 years old. Uh, I tried it with them. Uh, so if you want to create a class, you press here and you create a new class, okay? But this is the class that I used it with. And in this class, bachillerato, year 11 students, um, I have only done an online round table not an oral one. And this is an example. This is what, um, was, what, what I did with them. So what you see here, if I wanted to create a new round, round table, I would press here, the plus button, and I would choose, do I want a written assignment or do I want a live uh, debate discussion assignment? Okay, that's what I would press. But I'm here to show you um, what this tool does. So when you create an assignment, uh, these are real students, but not with their real name, okay? These here are the list of the, the 15 students that joined my, my writing assignment, okay? Uh, I could show you the real names by pressing the, the, the I here, or I can hide it and they become another character. This is something that, I, that they really loved because they could interact with each other without the real name. So nobody knew who Newton was, Michelangelo, Isaac Newton, and so on. They didn't know which classmate that was. And they really loved that anonymity. That's called anonymity here. You can have it on or off, okay? So when the student uh, accessed their assignment, uh, they saw my instructions, which are here. These, these are the instructions are created. Objetivos, uh, objectives, goals, what I want you to do, to, to learn how to express yourself in German, to practice uh, expressions that I gave them on a Quizlet, um, to practice those expressions. I provided them with a Quizlet with vocabulary, as you can see, you can insert a link. I also embedded a game. So as you can see, there's a game embedded here. I shared the history of scorpions with a video and I gave them the instructions, which were uh, these two questions. You have to answer these two questions in 50, between 50 and 100 words. words. And uh, then they have to provide peer feedback. So they had to read uh, what their classmate had written and comment, uh, not freely, comment answering my four questions. Did you like the assignment? Did your, did your classmate use the vocabulary I provided or not? Uh, which, uh, which answer do you think is better, your classmates or yours and why? And which grade do you think your classmate deserves from one to 10? So that was my peer feedback guidance. And uh, these are the responses that students did. Okay, this is a response from a student, the text that he wrote. These are the comments that he received from other classmates, as you can see, lots of them. And this was my assessment of the uh, activity. I, I had, you can create your own rubric on the system. So I created a rubric on the system and they call it criteria, okay, instead of rubric, but it's the same. And I gave them uh, private feedback apart from the final grade, okay? So this is what they did. Um, and the magic or the great thing that I love about this is that you get a report. Sorry, I was too quick. By pressing here, summary. Uh, before before um, we go into the report, yeah. on, we've got a couple of questions, if that's yeah. okay. So yeah, es sure. es Esmeralda is asking, do the students work individually to do Individually. This? this is an individual assignment and they they work by 
uh, commenting on each other's uh, creations, writings, but it's individual uh, work. Yes. And then, right. And then you're then seeing their uh, their changes in real time. Is that right? Yeah, you're seeing I'm seeing their changes in real time. I'm, I'm seeing I, if I give them feedback. Oh, I'll stop the game. Um, if I well, whatever, if I give them feedback, they can see my feedback and they and they can go back and edit uh, their their response. I mean, it's not fixed. They could go back and edit the mistakes that I told them about. OK, fantastic. Um, and when they're given their name, um, their anonymous name, do they have any choice about that or is that? Just no, it's yeah. random. And if they don't know who that is, they press on the picture right. and, and the tool tells them in English who this person was. OK, so can they see each other's answers too? They can see each other's answers once they submit them, not right. while they are working on the answers. OK, that's, I, think those, I think those are all the questions. The other main one was when they uh, access Parlay, do they need to create an account with an email address and a password, the students? Um, they, I, I think so. Okay. I think so. They, okay. they, they need a Microsoft or email account as you, as, as you. I mean, as I showed at the beginning, uh, you share a link with them, but to access that link, they connect with their user. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That's really helpful to know. And uh, Esther said, can students see your feedback to the other students, or can you leave private feedback? I think I saw a message about private feedback a moment ago on the screen. Is that possible? Yeah. Private feedback is uh, only seen by the student who wrote that text okay not by the other ones okay so the awesome. other ones cannot see the grade that i gave someone they can see if i make a, a, a public comment but if i uh, assess them uh, that is private okay okay and um can you set a deadline for the work i mean would yeah, this yeah. be done would this be done synchronously or a, can it can be can it be set as a, as an assignment can it be done as an assignment you create look if i go to round table and i do it briefly uh create my own start from scratch okay you i could reuse one but if i start from scratch i create this is what you see when you want to create there's there's a template that you can follow or change completely okay but you have different templates that you can use for argumentative essay literature reflection uh well different templates okay mm -hmm. and depending on the templates uh you get here a sample are you sure yes you get a sample instruction let's say guidance that you can follow right okay but you can delete it and do your own i mean you can do whatever you want to Amazing. you can even add your big body if esmeralda is asking for that <laughs> you can add your big body here she, she isn't but i'm sure she's thinking of it and so, that, so that's that's the written that's the written assignment. And yes, uh, and but this is the, the written assignment. assignment. No, yeah, yeah. the speaking you're going to you're going to see now as a student. Okay. And yes, you can you can um, you can have a date. Okay. Brilliant. So I have a date here. Uh, uh, whatever, twenty four. Uh, save and I have my date for the round table that I have just created. Lovely. That's really lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and the report is awesome. This is what I love, uh, especially apart from the peer feedback and from the fact that the, they can comment on each other's work. The summary that you get is awesome. You will see it now. Uh, you press summary and you access a global class-wide um, report and an individual report. The, 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 the class-wide uh, report gives you all this. The, it gives you also a keyword cloud automatically. The, the language changes automatically. This is German, but if you were doing a French assignment or a Spanish assignment, the language would change automatically with the words, the most used words that your student, uh, your students used for this assignment, which I find really interesting as a teacher. And if there's here a word that you don't want to include, you can click here and take it away from from the from the word cloud okay yeah for example i would remove it oh no it doesn't let me go back i don't know why but it works okay it's because of the zoom now um okay so uh that is the the class feedback okay the word cloud 
um, uh, model submissions. You can mark with the star the submissions that you think were like the best ones. You can mark them with a star and they remain there. And then individual feedback, you can hide the names uh, or show the names. This is the individual report that you get. You get a report with the number of words each one wrote. You get a report with the percentage of reading that they did. Uh, this means if they read their classmates' um, submissions or not, okay? So I can see the students who worked harder and the students who didn't. And the number of comments they made to other classmates, I can see it here. This is in real time, okay? For example, as you can see here, there's a student who did only one comment. I, he did it at the last minute because I showed them this report before we finished the activity. And I said, I don't want to see any zeros here because that means you didn't comment on any assignments. And there was a zero here. So he quickly go, went and, and commented quickly. And this is the number of words that they wrote in their comments, the average. So it's really, and you can export it as well as an Excel uh, file, okay? And, and then um, in the class, I, I forgot to mention, in the class-wide report, you get a, um, you get a, a picture of the interaction, the interaction the group had. I mean, as you can see here, my activity was really interactive. Everybody interacted with everybody. But this gives you a lot of information as a teacher. Uh, if a student was not commented on or whatever, you would see it here. Okay, so it's it's really powerful, and I, I, I really like I really love this tool for for written assignments. That would be the online um, this option, the online uh, roundtable. Now we're going to see the other one, but you are going to we're not just going to see it; you're just going to live it, if that's okay. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to show my my screen again. Uh, can I just clarify? Is it free? Is Parlay free? It is free. Yes, there's a limit of uh, there's a limit number of um, assignments that you can have, but it is free. Up to twenty, I think it's the limit. Wow, brilliant! So you can all you can always delete and reuse. I mean, it's, it's completely free. Okay. And uh, well, this is, I'm just going to skip all this because this is everything I just told you. You will have it on the presentation as a reminder later, but this is what I wanted. The live round table, which is the speaking tool that this tool has, which is what we're going to try out, okay? So uh, I'm going to give you the code. Give me a moment the link so that you can join. People who want to join and try it can join. Uh, we've just been asked about the limit for students. Is there a limit to the number of students that can take part? Not that it? I know Not that I know of. Okay. I mean, I, I, I haven't tried it with, we will try it today with as many people as they want <laughs> to access, but cool. no, not that I know of. And I was at a webinar for, uh, for Google trainers with this tool, which is where I discovered it. And it was like 200 people or so on. So I don't think there's a limit, really. Awesome. <laughs> okay, this is, the, this is the magic link I'm going to post in the chat. Um, where do I have the chat now? Here, okay, chat. So I'm going to start the parlay as well. Myself, MFL Twitterati, I think it was. This is it, MFL Twitterati. Okay, live round table, live discussion. So, yeah, I did it right. This is the link. And I think it's the same that I posted, but just in case, yeah, it's the same. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen anything in the chat, I don't think. No, Unless I've missed it. No. Oh, because there's a it switched to Rafio. Okay, I don't yeah, know why. You need to send it to everyone. Yeah. That's okay. Todos. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. I don't know why it changed to a person called Rafio. Ah, because she sent me a private message and <laughs> I didn't. Okay, I will read it later because I wasn't looking at the chat. 
Okay, so uh, I see people that, uh, that are in already. So this is how it works, okay? The teacher provides you with a, with a link, which you obtain. Once you create the live round table, you obtain the link by pressing invite, like I'm doing right now. So you can copy the link here, or you can add people, or you can post it on Google Classroom or Teams, Microsoft Teams. So it's really easy, okay? You give the link to people and as you are accessing, okay, you are here. So what can teachers do with this? And what can students do? I'm going to show you, okay? Uh, this is a debate tool. So student activities are, they can take notes. We are discussing a topic. In our case, it's going to be any questions or anything you want to comment on the tool. I encourage you to use it to speak, to speak, because that's the way we're going to try this tool. So even though Joe was doing a fantastic job with the chat, I encourage you to, to ask questions with this tool, okay? So um, you can take notes while you are listening to others in order not to forget what you want to say or whatever. You can um, um, make questions or you can add new idea, challenge, or build on. Okay, these three are very specific. New idea is I want to share a new idea with a group. Challenge is I want to make a challenging question to the audience, to the person who is speaking at the debate. And build on is I want to say something related to what you are saying, okay? But basically it's, I mean, you can press whatever you want to. Um, I, I don't think there's, there's, a, there's any difference uh, in the way it's used, okay? And the question. And then uh, you can also hit the applause button if you liked what somebody said. And you can vote if there's someone who is made a question or whatever and you want to vote for it, uh, you can vote. What teacher can do is I can take notes while I am listening to students, you in this case. I can give a nudge to a student. Imagine that I'm holding a debate in the classroom and a student um, is not saying a word. So I can give him a nudge. I can tell him, hey, please say something or whatever. And I can do live polls. This is awesome. Well, I am listening to people discussing something. I can make a live poll, okay? That is what teachers can do. And after we try the tool, we will see the summary because the summary is amazing. It tracks record of, of the minutes that a person spoke and you get that information by clicking a button. So that is to me the magic about this tool, okay? So how does it work? Okay, so I'm the speaker. I don't see anybody wanting to post a question. I would encourage somebody to, even though it's fake, even, even though you don't want to activate your microphone, whatever, just fake it, but try to press the, the, um, uh, the question button to make a question or get a saying or whatever. So can I just clarify for a minute? On my yeah. screen, it says live discussion questions. Have you used any of the tools I mentioned today? And then it says take notes before and during the discussion. Is that is that the right thing I should be seeing, having clicked on the link? Uh, I haven't I haven't posted any poll. Now, if I start a poll, you would see this. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So now it says, do you find this tool okay. easy to access? Okay. Okay. So that's a poll I created the other day. Uh, I had forgotten about it, but I could create a vote, uh, a, a poll right now while you are speaking. If someone were speaking, I could create the poll right now. Okay. So as you can see, okay, this was my poll. 95% of the people said it's easy to access. Five, four percent no. Okay, great. And as you can see, people can change their vote because someone changed it just now. So yeah. That is the poll option. And uh, if someone wants to speak, uh, I, I would see the question mark here or something. Nobody, I mean, you should press um, a question or, or I'm not seeing your screen right now, but you should have a button where you could press to ask a question. Ah, sorry, I haven't started it. Yeah, that's great. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. There, there you go. So where, where, did you, where did you click just then? Okay. Look. To start the discussion. Ah, to start. There was a start. Look, I right. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got it. There's a start button here. I, I had forgotten about it. So as you can see, everybody who wants to have a say in here appears on the screen. Okay. And the teacher decides who goes first. 
oh, sorry, what is this? The teacher decides who goes first. So if I want, um, if I want um, add a student to queue, okay? She's the first one. Then I decide, I press on the plus button and I decide who's the next one. Um, this one, I'm just doing it randomly, okay? Um, so this means Rocio is good to go. So now if you activate, if you activate your micro, you could speak. The moment of truth. Yeah, here is, uh, I can clap. Come on, Rocio, don't be shy. One person wants to hear Rocio. You see, you can vote if you want to hear her and you want to hear the other ones. So, ev ev so people have been so muted in Zoom, but they presumably they'd be able to access because yeah, this is a separate this is a page. different so yeah, it they, matter, it's a separate it? thing. Yeah, they sh it shouldn't matter. No, yeah, yeah. is she saying something in the chat? Maybe she's saying she can't uh, or whatever. Not at the moment. Do you want to ask someone else? Okay, Maybe yes. To, so I'm going to, to remove it and add it later. Okay, and the next one is Sophie. but I can't hear her. I don't think it has to do with Zoom, but now that you mention it, maybe it has to maybe do with that. Maybe that's what it is, okay. Well, I can, I can easily, I'll just unmute everybody. Yeah, so is that okay? And then we'll got, just see yeah. if it works. Yeah, with that. Okay. It will, yeah let's going, see if it works. So I'm about to do Thank a you. lot of participants to unmute themselves. Okay. Um, but I would be very surprised if that's affected another app. Mm. But yeah, got that I pattern. think so too. <laughs> and and Jimena, what do uh, what do people have to click on so they can talk? Uh, um, I don't think they. I, I mean, when I when I use the tool myself, I just activated my micro and I said something, and I and hello, I was hello, heard. Hello, 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 hello. You see, okay, there's so, Sophie. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's Sophie. We can hear you, Sophie. Great. So we really enjoyed what you said. Okay. So we clap. Okay. And once Sophie is over, I don't know if she wants to say something else, but once it, it would be nice that you uh, spoke a bit longer, other ones or whoever wants to, Sorry, because then you will see the report of how many, how much time you spoke each, which is awesome. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you sophie okay you. so sophie's ideas were wonderful imagine i want to have yeah. a poll here paul did you like sophie's ideas okay uh yes awesome no not very much whatever yeah so as you can see i'm creating a poll at the moment yeah, and you could vote everyone. Okay, that's it. That's how it works for teachers. It's really easy to use. Um, so I'm going to remove Sophie, and the next so, in line so comes. Can I, just can I just clarify then? So you yeah. have, cho as the teacher, you've chosen someone to speak, but does because it mean that only that person can speak, or anybody can speak? That means only that person is uh, on the. I mean, anybody could speak if they wanted to. But this is it's for for it's the order in which they speak, which for debates and discussions is important. So you put them here on this deck, the speaker on deck first and second. Okay, do you understand? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean? So so then on uh, let's say on um, the person who's uh, the first speaker, would they be notified that they have the the floor to speak? Is that how that works? Yeah, you, you tell them orally. I mean, okay, okay. I, I, okay. So now, Uxia, I don't know if that name is pronounced like that. So you, you're good to go. I tell them, okay. Uh, hola, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. My name is Uxia. I'm from Galicia, and I am amazed by your webinar, Jimena. Thank you so much. I can't <laughs> wait to try all of these tools with my students. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you for being here for so long, so much time. 
it's definitely worth it. Thank you. So I'm clapping because I loved her answer. I'm clapping, clapping, clapping. You can clap too if you want to. And uh, she's finished. So I take her out. And then if you think you spoke enough, um, Sophia, uh, you, um, you have a button on your screen that says tap out. So you can tap out in order to be removed from here. Everybody who doesn't want to say anything else can be removed from here. Okay. So next one is Rocio right now. Let's see if we can hear her now. Hi, Sofia. Rocio. Okay, so I, well, it Maybe says I'm speaking, fallen. but I can't be heard. Is that something that she's written or is that? Yeah, I'm speaking, but I can't be heard, she's saying. Okay. I, th I, I think know. I think people have trouble. got the I think people have got the idea now. I'm very aware yeah, of time, right. um, Jimena. Exactly. So would it be okay well, if we started to sort of wrap up a, a little bit? That's yeah, it's been amazing. Okay. It's been amazing. So we 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 can we can um, we can just say goodbye to Esmeralda, and uh, I'm sure she wants to say something. Oh, it's been amazing, Jimena. <laughs> <It's been> amazing. <laughs> yes, it, it's so inspiring. So well done. I'm clapping to you, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Esmeralda. And now, uh, Silvia, I think it's that. Hi, yes, Silvia. absolutely fantastic. Not sure whether you can hear me. Yes, perfectly yes, we well. Can. Yeah. yeah, absolutely enjoyed it. Lots of ideas. I just have to digest it now all. <laughs> well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now we have a lot of examples. So I'm just rough off. I'm going to stop the debate. Okay. I stopped the debate. And now um, you see the summary. So participation rate, you get a percentage of people who participated. You get uh, the time that people spoke or were with the microphone active, at least making noises. Okay. So here you have it. And tap-ins per student is the interventions they did. Yeah. And this is the number of the clicks that, the, that you, um, that, you uh, that we received. Uh, summary and so on. <laughs> Okay, and you get individual as well, individual uh, report of everything that happened in the discussion. So especially the time spent uh, is something that I really, I find really useful for older students, 16, 17, because when you hold discussions in the classroom, um, some, there, there are always people who tend to be quiet, but then when you give, give them a grade, they, they, they say that they don't agree because they were speaking a lot. At least that happens to me in Spain. I don't know in other countries. Wow. Um, so um, I, I found that amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just mute everyone if that's okay. And then you can unmute yourself, Jimena, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and if you, yeah, perfect. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. So that was my, well, I had my, my last, are you seeing my screen with my last today's takeaways? Yes. Okay. So that's my, 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 my final questions. You got three minutes to answer. Again, you have the, I'll put the, I put it in the, in the chat and, and we are over. So I awesome. know it was a lot of time, but trying tools takes time. Also, this is the first time I'm using WooClub. Uh, I hadn't used this and I find it really good to go. It's like Menti, but, but well, I, I, the free version only allows you to have two questions. That's why I only put two questions, but it's nice. I like this. So thank you very much. There's a timer here so that you know how much time you have left for writing your today's takeaways, which I'm going to post on Twitter later. I'm going to have a screenshot and, and keep it and put it on, on Twitter. And that was pretty much it. That's so, well, you could just see, can't you? You could just see by everybody's yeah. comments. Let, let's just wait a, a few more seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's comments coming in. Sure, but... sure. Thank you so much, uh, Jimena. You've really blown people's minds, me included. And you've so, shown us so many things, even those people who are in the audience who are big EdTech fans, you've shown us lots of new things to get our teeth into. So it's just wonderful, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. 
I managed to say everything I wanted, so I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just to clarify, with the debate um, option in Parley, anybody can speak if they want to. Is that right? It's not about giving people the floor and muting everyone else. Is that right? Anyone can speak. Yes. In fact, the tool was designed to to use in a in an in person classroom. I mean, you don't you don't even need to use it with Zoom. You you can use it in a in a um, in a, an in person setting, um, uh, just to to track the progress of the students and to get them write down their ideas and so on. So I found that really interesting, even though. Uh, as I told you, I have tried the written tool more because I find it easier to for my groups to, to use. But I uh, I think this tool for debates with older students is really powerful. And especially the, the minute tracking when they speak and so on. I find that the report fascinating. Amazing. And we've only got 17, sorry, 16 seconds to go. Yeah, just, yeah, just brilliant. Well, you'll see, you'll see from the chat and from the... Uh, the word cloud, which is appearing in front of us as we speak, how much people have appreciated what you've done today. I know it's been a long webinar for everybody, but it's just it's been absolutely worth it. And the fact we're recording it now is, is wonderful. It means that we can then watch back the recording. And I'm sure lots of people will be wanting to do that. Either the people watching live right now or those people that have missed out on this amazing opportunity will be able to watch it um, at their leisure with the pause button so they can then have a go themselves. And I'm sure, like movie. <laughs> I'm sure people will be sharing their, their outcomes um, on Twitter later, showing how people are using it. I'm particularly excited about the parlay ideas and how people are going to share those. Um, but it's, it's just been, I knew it would be, of course, but it's just been amazing, absolutely amazing. Over to you, Helen, for a few final thoughts. Yes, just to say thank you so much, just echoing everything that Joe has said, you will love reading all everything that's in the chat. You've seen it there as well. Superb. And also I have had Twitter open as well because I'm looking there for other comments and just loads of people flooding over there as well. So <laughs> you're a very, very popular person and <laughs> rightly so. And as always, thank you, Joe, for putting all of this together. No I'm looking at my diary and what we've got next week. So we've got you know, just four more things coming up next week. So Monday, we've got Tilt and PowerPoint. We've got an AWO Roadshow on Wednesday. The West Midlands are doing show and tell on Thursday, which looks great. And you're speaking at that, aren't you, Joe? I am. I am indeed. That's great. And of course, next Saturday, same time, same place here, we'll be with Sonia. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> yeah. Lovely big family. Yeah. So thank you ever so much. And thank you for everybody's patience. If I can say as well, patience, um, on letting you in because we have just started this new procedure now where we're making you know letting people in one by one people who give themselves a first name and a second name so the more that you can spread the word to people that you know we we love you all but we obviously really do have to have some sort of um some sort of control as well so apologies if you if you know anyone who's upset tell them that we love them but um what i'll do is in the future i am going to put an instruction on how to use Zoom into our registration so that people know how to rename themselves, because I think that was the problem. I think some people genuinely just didn't know how to rename themselves. <laughs> yeah. It, just just yeah. because you can tell people it is, you've actually got to go out and you've got to come in through your desktop app um, or change your name in the um, on the desk. But, uh, but I'll, I'll include that in all future things. So. Okay, and, and just I, for, I forgot to thank Slides Mania. I always mention her. It's on my slide right now. <laughs> oh yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I always use her templates, and every, all the template that I have used for this presentation is hers. So I always say thank you uh, in my webinars to her for her amazing creations. So we've almost taken this for granted now, haven't we? This is things so yeah. we're looking at all of the things you're doing, but your actual presentation is is lovely. So really good, lovely, and I love your bit emojis too. Oh. Brilliant. So, should we stop recording now? Yeah, I think we um, should stop recording now. Um, stop.